any time I got to be with everybody, it was it was really really fun. R regardless of like the dynamic of any characters, everybody back behind set were laughing and pranking each other and probably just being like a you, like a terror. You, <laughs> I pranked every. I got you were pranking us. No one <laughs> pranked anyone else. No. How does it feel to be a part of it though? It feels like really extraordinary, and I feel really lucky <clears throat> to be a part of this show. And if I am getting typecast, there's a pretty cool thing to be typecast. Let's go though. with it. Yeah. I'm going with it. <laughs> So I've been waiting for a long time to see a sequel to Willow, and I was very excited to see this series. It's exciting because the cast is so much bigger than it was in the movie, and both of you play major parts in this story. What was it like joining this project with like the new generation of characters? It was awesome. It was super, it was definitely exciting to be a part of something that people love and hold true to. And you're saying you were waiting years for this to happen. That's like incredible to hear that that feels like it gives us a little bit of purpose of like why we're making something mm. um and and i think it was really cool creatively and and just a cool opportunity to sort of expand on a world that's so loved and and sort of have that creative freedom to to introduce to, to i'm like talking i can't even finish my thought um you know what i mean <laughs> yeah well to to to, to like be able to <laughs> to honor the original thing and yeah. to be a part of a tradition that people care about and at the same time carving out something new which hopefully like new generations will also appreciate and maybe even be able to share with like their parents or the people who'd seen it connecting gens connecting gens so, yeah and dempsey for you your character is not part of the group at the beginning so at the outset all of these characters kind of get to gel together and you're off on your own did that make it more of a challenge when everybody comes together later in the series? Uh, so the challenge was being on my own, personally, <laughs> socially, because you know you got people doing one thing and then you're doing something completely different and they're in one location and you're not. And uh, you're also in Wales where you don't know anybody. So it's very much like that was the thing, mm -hmm. that was a personal challenge. So it, anytime I got to be with everybody, it was it was really, really fun. R regardless of like the dynamic of any characters, everybody Ba behind set we're laughing and pranking each other and probably just being like a per you, like a terror you <laughs> i pranked every i got you were pranking us no one <laughs> pranked anyone else no one pranked me back so i remember getting in trouble really big trouble at the beginning it's so much so in fact that on my trailer they put up tmz reporter instead of my name because they were like he's the one who's going to be spoiling stuff i had texted ellie from an unknown number that I was a reporter from The Sun and I had included some spoilers and been like, care to comment also, would you send us uh, your headshot so we could put it on the front page? And it, I thought she would maybe know it was me, she didn't. It flew all the way up the flagpole on like the second day we're all together and the head of security and publicity spilled her coffee. And from that point on, we were just pretty much, I think it set the, the precedent where everyone <laughs> just loved each other and uh, was having fun. And it was really fun and funny and everybody enjoyed being pranked, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, I did ask uh, other interviews, and I asked who the funniest person was on set. And Dempsey, your name did come up as number one from everybody yes. else. So. That is, that means wildly true. Wow. Well, honestly, everyone is so funny. <laughs> I think everyone Just is so it. individually funny that that actually means a lot that anyone would have thought to say that. <laughs> and and I, my <laughs> well, and I think that the the fun thing is that everybody in here does have a great time. It does come through in the series. It's phenomenal. Like I said, I've been waiting a long time and I can't wait for everybody to check it out. It is a worthy successor to the original and I can't wait for everybody to see it. So thank you thank so much you. for your time. That really means a lot. Thank that you. That really means a lot. Thank awesome. you so much thank for your time. You. Have a good day. Thanks. You, too. you think you know what is real and what isn't. What is light? What is dark? Now, forget all you know. Come with me. Willow. Ellie, it was actually eight years ago I was in London interviewing as part of a group for Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. And on that production, you were, you know, costumes, lots of special effects, lots of crazy stuff. And now it's full circle. Now you're in another project, lots of special effects, lots of costumes. What, what does it feel like being a part of such a massive project? Wait, uh, that was eight years ago. I just have to like clarify that. <laughs> Wow, man, that's so crazy. My favorite product you've ever done. Oh, I, I loved 
Probably not. It was so fun. And zombies. It was so fun and it was so silly. It was great. It was really good. Um, how does it feel to be a part of Willow? It feels like really extraordinary, and I feel really lucky <clears> to be a part of this show because, like, you know, it's similarly to Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, the scale of the show. I mean, it's just so huge. It's so so grand and the stunts are so wonderful and the costumes and the special effects and the creatives and the cast so yeah i just felt really lucky to be a part of the show and tony i just have to say you're in one of my favorite movies of all time so it's a pleasure to talk to you oh, um thank you. grand budapest hotel is just phenomenal so oh my god the... it's one of my favorite movies as well and I mean, I love your, your character in the Spider-Man films, but you were, it's a smaller role. So I was worried seeing the trailers, is he gonna be in another role that's kind of a sideline player, but you're a significant character, a major part of this story. What was it like being a part of this world? Uh, it was incredible. And um, yeah, no, I was worried that it was gonna be a small part too. And, you know, thankfully John said, oh no, 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 I'm gonna put you to work. Um, and so he did. I was a fan of the original movie when I was a kid, so, uh, being a part of this was a huge honor and um, it was just amazing to kind of have this new story um, but also that ties in so well to the previous film um, it almost feels like just a continuation not a tribute not a reboot not a anything it just feels like the next step um, which is awesome I enjoyed it so much I, I love my co-stars from all the OGs like Joanne and um, Kevin Pollack and, and Warwick himself, Willow, to, to the newer guys, you know? These guys are incredible, and uh, I was a huge fan of Pride, Prejudice, and Zombies as well, so, you know, yeah, I was very excited to be working with Ellie. You're incredible. Thank you. And there's such a great chemistry between the whole group, and there's a scene in the second episode where Ellie, your character, is just feeling, like, down and not able to do what you think you're able to do, and Tony, mm -hmm. you come in, and there's just, like, a support amongst each other. The characters really get along so well. Did you feel that camaraderie off-camera as well, working as a, as a cast? Imagine we said no. <laughs> <laughs> I actually love that scene. Like, it's one of my favorite scene. scenes. When you, I remember shooting that scene yeah. and being like, oh my God, the stuff that you say in it is so cute. And so it's just such yeah. a nice scene that, but no, definitely the camaraderie was certainly there. I think the producers and everyone kind of behind the scenes and creative team did a phenomenal job in, in casting. Um, we all adore each other and they gave us kind of a month of a boot camp to kind of get to know each other. We did all did personal training and learning to ride horses together and sword training whatever it might have been rehearsals it just gave us a lot of chemistry so that by the time we got to these scenes we all felt comfortable with each other totally. to improvise to you know feel like you need this moment for you to have this um and to feel comfortable asking for that we, <laughs> so yeah and we just found we had so much in common and we yeah. were just able to talk about so much and like share stories and watch films together yeah. and like hang out offset so it was really it was, it was cool. and the beautiful thing is that we all have our own unique dynamics with each other and the writers and especially john kasdan of dawson's creek fame who was our showrunner kind of looked at that and put that into the show and wrote okay i see umar and you know tony have a bit of a bromance let me put that in there a little bit okay this is here and you know within the scope of what they already had in their minds they let us and put the dynamics into the show awesome well it's i've been waiting decades to see this it's phenomenal i really loved it thank you so much and i can't wait for everybody to check it out Aww, likewise thank, thank you. you so much thank you when i was a kid i used to play at being a sorcerer visiting strange worlds fighting monsters Run! I never thought I'd actually really do it. What the hell is that? Oh. Aaron, I'm getting a little worried though that you're starting to get typecast in the projects that you're selecting. Star Wars, you played a badass. Falcon of the Winter Soldier, another badass. And then here, you're playing yet another badass, but- With a mouse. Connected... Yes. And I would say that the one thing though is that you never make them, they're not just two dimensional characters. They're not just fighters. There is a lot of actual story behind them and a lot of connection is that important for you for it to be more than just an action role uh yeah i i i think that's i think it's massively important to have this deeper understanding of the character i think makes them a lot more interesting and yeah i wouldn't worry too much about me getting typecast and if i am getting typecast it's a pretty cool thing to be typecast. go with it yeah <laughs>
Oh, yeah, the, don't worry about, about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Another sword wielding legend. <laughs> and Amar, uh -oh. I, knowing that there was likelihood that Val Kilmer was not going to be a part of this project, Mad Mardigan was one of my favorite characters in the original, but you mm -hmm. are the heir apparent because Borman is just awesome. He's witty. He's got the great dialogue and the one-liners. Did you look back at Val Kilmer's performance to inform how you played this character? Yes and no. I mean, it was very clear from the beginning that I was going to fulfill that archetype. And I, I grew up with Willow, so I knew it. But I didn't watch it too many times because Val is so unique and what he does is so specific to that film. So I, I tried to emulate the tone and the comedy that the film brought and do it in my own way. But I, I, you know, I didn't want to copy or emulate Val specifically. I like to think of it as an idea, and, and this is something that develops in the show, all these connections, but I, I imagine a world in which Mad Martigan and Borman could hang out together and not be stepping on each other's toes. Um, and that's kind of how I tried to approach it. And it comes through that this group, all of you, it's a larger group than it was in the film, where you just had a small core group of characters, but here there's so many more, but everybody gets a good amount of time to develop their story, develop their characters. Did it feel that way behind the scenes as a cast? Did you really come together in that same way? Yes, very much so. We, we did a, a month long boot camp where we, you know, learned to sword fight and horse ride and did like PT workouts and rehearsals like eight hours a day for all of that. And it, it cemented us as uh, friends and a family and actors. And then very quickly between that dynamic and the scripts, I think we all had the understanding that it was so beautifully crafted and that every character has their own arc. And again, no one is stepping on anyone's toes. And that, that, that made me personally feel free to explore my character as much as possible without anyone else being worried about what I was doing. And I think those dynamics really flow throughout the show. And Aaron, I'm gonna put you on the spot here and ask because there is so much action, there's a lot of scary parts in this too and there's a great deal of humor, who is the funniest person in the cast? Maybe Ellie or Dempsey? Ooh, yeah, good shout. They make me laugh so much. Dempsey, for sure, Ellie, for sure. Everyone's funny, man. I, they, everyone in this cast is incredibly yeah. funny. Me, it's, myself. Yeah, absolutely, you're all phenomenal. I was waiting for a long time to see this, and it really lives up to the potential of what I wanted to see in a sequel. Thank you so much for your time. I can't wait for everybody to check it out. Well, I'm Thank glad you enjoyed it. My dear friend. I thought I could prevent all this. I was wrong. My brother was abducted. The world needs you again. It needs your magic. Follow me. So the there's a list, a short list of films or things that I have had on my dream list for a long time. And since I was eight, when I saw Willow in the theater, I have been waiting for there to be a sequel, a follow-up. I read the novels right. and have just waited for this. So I've well, been we're anticipating exactly this. the same age and in exactly the same boat. Right, I saw it. There was nothing else like it. There was no Lord of the Rings or anything at that point, no. and I was just awe-inspired by it. No. So watching this, it really does check all the boxes for what I was waiting right. for. How did you? How did the story come about? Like, where did it come from? Did you draw from the novels, or where did you come from? Oops. Well, well, much like you, I, I walked out of that theater at eight years old and thought, "What's next?" And specifically, "What's next for this little baby?" You know, I, I just thought that it was. I mean, there's something so powerful about the image of Warwick sort of kissing this baby and walking away, but there's something also sort of incongruous about it when you're an eight-year-old kid that like, right. how can you love someone that much and just say goodbye? And I think that seeded for me the idea that there was always gonna be more to this story. You know, and as the years went by, I certainly was aware of the novels. I knew that he had taken it to a place of, of what that character would be like as an adolescent girl. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I came to Lucasfilm in, in 2012 and started working with them, I, I sort of clearly saw this as an opportunity for a Harry Potter type story about coming of age and about growing up and about how one sort of balances the power inside them and the expectations around that power with their own desires and frustrations and insecurities, you know? Yeah. And Clearly, there is a larger cast here of main characters than we had yeah. last time around. But what I oh. noticed right from the outset, when you start with this, it's just as scary and just as dark as the original, but there's still that lightness. How do you find that balance between the fun and the scary? Well, the scary is so important to us, and it was something we really wanted to, to make sure we were delivering on, because the movie, when you're a kid, has this very palpable, tactile kind of danger to it where mm -hmm. 
No, the dogs are going to maul an old lady. Your grandmother is going to get mauled, and there's no way around it. You're going to see that on screen, and it's going to scare the crap out of you. And uh, and we wanted that feeling because I think it just ups the tension, and the every aspect of the story is heightened because you feel that the danger is real. So we really wanted to stay faithful to that, and, and Lucasfilm, everyone involved was supportive. They knew the strength of of these movies that we grew up on was that they felt real and they yeah. felt dangerous and it made the rest of them so much better. So we we figured out a way to do a sequence in the first episode that would deliver on the promise of all that danger and all that sort of pain almost that is promised in the bad guys um, to set up a real threat for them to go out into the world and, and face. And I exactly what you just said when I saw it the first in the theater, the film, like I was terrified that these yeah. characters were going to die. And so the yeah. stakes here feel really real. Yeah. And the production quality here is phenomenal too. It looks more cinematic, I hate to say, than the original. What were the, the biggest logistical challenges with bringing this story and kind of making it look as expansive as it is? Well, it's, you know, the, the biggest challenge is you're shooting out in the elements in Wales, you know, and that that is a, a real thing. And it's like, you know, I grew up with my father sort of in love with and making big westerns all over uh, the southwestern part of the United States. And it's a lot like the similar challenge of you're, you're really out there, there are horses, they're not always behaving the way you want. There are actors fighting with swords, there are stunt people doubling them. We wanted to do a real adventure that had the nuts and bolts of that. And then you add into it this element of prosthetic effects and creature creatures being created sort of with a lot of work and talent and, and all of that, but interacting with actors who are doing their best to do stunt work and, and to, to fight, it, it, it was a thrilling thing because you'd go out there on the set, even when it was really hard, and you didn't need a digital element to be immersed in this fantasy world where real monsters were fighting real kids, you know? Yeah, so, and I think that the I waited a long time for this, obviously, and you wow. never want to, you know, hope that there's going to be more. And it's really approached like this is a story. You have a beginning, a middle, and yes. end. So you're telling the story. If the opportunity arises, are there more Willow stories? That Absolutely, have and, and certainly by the end of the season, the 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 promise is there for more stories. Because like like with Harry Potter, I feel that Elora Dannon had such potential to be a rich and complicated heroine. You know, what, what Willow provides and is often the case in stories like this is he's the extremely fun character you get to fall in love with. But Elora is saddled with that Luke Skywalker burden of being the one who's going to save the world. Right. And we thought that was just the, this season and these eight stories were just the beginning of that journey for her. Well, it absolutely blew me away. I loved it. it oh, I'm was, so glad. Yeah. I, I really, I, was I can't for. tell you, it's like the, the people ask like, why did you do this? And it's like for people like you and me who just wanted this story to continue and, and build out this world, you know? Absolutely. And it does feel like there is an entry for people that are not familiar yeah. with the series, but it does kind of pay uh, tributes to all the fans that have been waiting for a long time. So thank well, you so much for making thanks, this. I really thanks appreciate Thanks for talking. It. it really makes my day to hear that. It's, it's awesome. Cool. Thank you for your time. Talk to you soon. We have to hurry. How will you defeat us? Same as last time. With my friends.